Hi everyone, I'm just doing a little bit of experimenting here with a little circuit on the breadboard and I've got the oscilloscope there showing me the output. So what is this? This is just a little clock circuit that I've copied from uh, I, I can't remember whose circuit it was. It's, it's one of the Z80 computer projects and it's the one with the uh, fewest number of uh, chips so the most simplest of designs. I thought that would be a good place for me to start as a bit of a novice. Um, and all we've got here is, I don't know if you can see my horrible sketch, a couple of knock gates just in series. Um, so I guess what's going on here is whatever we've got on uh, pin 1 will get inverted on pin 2 and get inverted again on pin 4. And I think they're just kind of like buffers. Um, there's a little resistor at the top. I believe that might be called a bootstrap resistor just to get the circuit oscillating um, and there is another resistor down here 1k I have no idea why that's there possibly to limit the amount of current going through the crystal I don't know um, and you can see we've got the crystal down here and on each leg of the crystal we've got a 22 picofarad capacitor going down to ground um, so I believe this thing naturally oscillates anyway, these two inverters in series like this, I think they just naturally oscillate. But the crystal just makes the um, frequency kind of steady, at a, a steady fixed rate. Um, you'll have to take my word for that, I'm not an expert on this, somebody will probably give you a much better explanation of how a clock circuit works. But I thought I would just look at the circuit somebody else is using, build it up myself um, and see if I can get it to work. Now, I've built the circuit up here on a breadboard. I'm not going to try and explain the circuit too much on the breadboard because it's a little confusing. I'll, I'll do my best. Um, we can ignore this stuff over here. This is just a little um, 5 volt regulator because I'm powering this from a 9 volt battery. So I've just got the 5 volt uh, voltage regulator in there. So we've got 5 volts on the, the red line at the top here and the blue line down the bottom here is our ground. So you can see the two uh, green connections, they, they're just the power to the uh, logic chip. Um, and I've tied pins two and three together through that tiny little red jumper in there. Um, I've got the one mega ohm resistor, who is the brown resistor that's in there. Um, that's across, if we look back at our diagram, that's across pins one and two. And then the other resistor is from the, the jumper pins two and three to the other leg of the crystal. So that's in there, that's the blue resistor. You can see it's going to one leg of the crystal and then the white lead I've got in there is going to the other leg of the crystal from pin one. So that's here on our diagram. Um, and then just got the uh, two 22 picofarad capacitors going down to ground. So I think I've got the circuit right. Um, I've hooked up the oscilloscope. Now this is not the best probing technique. I'm really not an expert. This is uh, probably a terrible way of probing a clock signal. I think you should try and get rid of this long lead. Um, and there's a little spring that goes on the uh, probe, but I can't lay my hands on them. They're in the box for the oscilloscope. I didn't lose them, um, but I don't know where the box is in the house. So at the moment, I'm just probing like this. And this is the signal we got now. I don't know what it shows up like on my camera, but it's a little fuzzy. I'll try and point it out. Um, we get a little bit of a ghosting line down here. And I think that's probably why the frequency is drifting a little bit. Because I think most of the time we've got this kind of bright yellow signal fairly steady, but occasionally we're getting this little ghosted sort of copy that's just slightly different. Um, but the frequency is about right. Um, it says 3. Point, I don't know if I can focus on that. It's drifting between 3.68 and 3.7. Um, so you can to take an average of 3.69. And the crystal that I've got in there, I doubt the camera will pick it up. Will it? It's just never going to focus on that. Oh, maybe 3.6864. So that is about the frequency that we're seeing on the oscilloscope. So I believe the circuit's working. So that's kind of a kind of a success. Then I thought what I'd try is I've got another crystal here, um, which is 
Now that never is going to focus, is it? Um, it's 7.3728, 7.3728. And if I just literally rip this one out, I don't know if this is a good thing to be doing with the circuit powered on. You can see the oscilloscope is still oscillating, but the frequency has changed. And we'll pop that in there. I believe I've got it in the right holes, have I? No, I haven't. Goes in there. Okay, and you can see again on the oscilloscope, there's the clock signal again. Um, a little bit of an undershoot and a little bit of overshoot, and again, that may be because of my probing technique. I really don't know. But it looks like it's working. Um, and the frequency is, again, it's drifting a bit. 7.35 against 7.41. So I guess we're somewhere in the middle of that. And I can see, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, probably down here is the best place to see it. That little bit of ghosting again. Now I'm not sure what that is. Um, it could be the fact that I'm on this terrible breadboard. Um, and there's probably stray capacitance all over this circuit. So what I'm wondering is, what I wonder what we'll see if we actually build this circuit up onto a circuit board and solder it together. Whether that would clean that up any. Or whether I'm fighting a losing battle and it is just down to my probing technique. I'm going to have a go and solder that together. Okay, so I've transferred it to a circuit board. So... Hopefully the connection should be a little better now. And I've got my oscilloscope hooked up to a ground point. And I'm just going to probe um, the pin directly, pin 4 on the, on the chip here. So that's what I'm seeing on the screen. Um, it looks a little steadier, I think. Maybe, maybe not. What's the frequency doing now? The frequency is... Still moving a little bit, isn't it? And it still looks uh, kind of noisy on the um, the on cycle of the sort of the on period of the clock. The off period. I mean, there's, do you call that ringing at the bottom there a little bit? And then at the top, we get a little bit of overshoot, and then it's it's quite noisy. Um, so if anyone has got any ideas on whether that is normal or what might be causing that. I'd love to hear about it. Anyway, I think it basically works. Ah, look at that. That's really cleaned it up. That looks nice and steady now. Is it stopped drifting? Yes. Awesome. So, the only change I made was on the on the knot gate on, or on the uh not what do we call this the inverter logic chip um there was a few uh knot gates on there that i wasn't using so i've just tied all their inputs to ground to stop them from just floating around because i think they cause interference and that's given me a a nice a nice steady signal okay so we've still got a bit of um undershoot and overshoot um, again, not sure if that's to do with um, this lead on the probe. I really must try and find my spring, see if I can figure that out. Um, it's a nice uh, feature on the oscilloscope. You can just hit the uh, run stop button. It's actually red. It doesn't show up red on my camera. So I can uh, take my hands off the probe, um, but still have the um, waveform steady on the screen to look at. In fact, that was why it was uh, steady, wasn't it? Because I'd stopped it. A uh, bit of a dir moment there. I've got it running now. And it is moving slightly, but it's fairly steady. 3.68, 3.69. It's, it's not going up to 3.7 anymore. And the, the waveform just looks so much cleaner than before. So then one last thing. I found the uh, the little spring for the uh, oscilloscope probe, so I can now just probe pin four and put that spring on the ground pin of the chip, and that has actually um, reduced the overshoot by half. 
I've got um, 500 millivolt divisions there, so we've got about 500 millivolts of overshoot. So that's without the spring, and that's with using the spring. So it brings it down uh, a little bit. It's not really there in the first place, it's the probe that's introducing it. So there's still a little bit of overshoot, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I did find I could put a resistor on the uh, output as well, and it would reduce that a little bit more. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to leave things as they are. So I think I learned a, a little bit from that. Um, kind of part of it was how important the probing technique is. Um, the main difference was um, tying all the unused gates tying all their inputs down to ground. But there you go, there's my little oscillator. See you later.